Greetings and welcome to The End Last Week, This Week, and Next Week, the podcast companion to The End, the weekly newsletter that shines a light back on audio fiction shows after they've reached the finale of a season or the conclusion of the series. I'm your host and the curator of The End, Evo Terra. Let's get into it, shall we? Last Week. The most recent issue of The End, the 57th, highlighted nine shows in either the complete series or season finale section, and four of them wrapped in the last few days. Bad Influencer, a dramatized immersive rom-com from Gabby Conti and Emerald Audio with Gemini 13, posted the last episode of the full series on October the 3rd. This complete series, produced by a female-led, female-driven network that creates stories with New York Times bestsellers and nationally recognized female content creators, has nine episodes for just over three hours of immersive romantic comedy goodness. Also on October 3rd was the season one finale of Everyone's Happy, a dramatized sci-fi series from Gravy Tree Media. There are eight episodes currently available for nearly five hours of listening. Moonbase Theta Out, a long-running narrated sci-fi series from Monkey Man Productions and Fable and Folly, wrapped the entire series on October the 1st. Strap in for over 32 hours and four seasons across 82 episodes of this staple of fiction podcasting. And on September 29th, Morneau, a dramatized crime story from Jenny Decker, also wrapped up the entire series. You'll need about 23 hours to listen to all 70 episodes of the four seasons of this show. Listen to the end of this audio file to hear trailers or episode snippets from these recently finaled and complete shows. This week. With every issue, I make two recommendations for great audio fiction I personally love. As with all things in life, your mileage may vary. Before I do so, I do want to say a quick thank you to Charlotte Underwood, Ben Padden, Alex C. Tlander, and Ellen Keating. I recently changed the support levels for the end. I lowered the amounts, in fact. But these four <laughs> demanded that they continue to pay the prior higher rate. Because that's how much they believe in what I'm doing. So Charlotte, Ben, Alex, and Ellen, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now, let's get to my recommendations this week. My first recommendation is Unwell, another long-running show, this time a dramatized gothic mystery from Heartlife NFP. This is the kind of show that develops and keeps a cult following. Now it definitely takes its time, and the ghosts and the horror probably aren't what you suspect, but it is definitely worth a listen. Here's the trailer for Season 5. There have been a lot of times when I've walked away, sometimes run away, when things started to feel a little overwhelming. I suppose just this once, I wanted to stick in one place long enough to see the story through. I just wanted to Offer my condolences. I just really miss him. I do not believe in an afterlife. I am not really a ghost. I know you two work together, so maybe being here where he was? I'm sorry. Did you want to be alone? Unwell, a Midwestern Gothic mystery, the final season, debuting March 1st, 2023. Learn more at unwellpodcast.com. Unwell is a complete series. Find yourself about 29 hours of time to listen to all 60 episodes of the five seasons of this staple of today's audio fiction.
My second recommendation is Small Victories, a dramatized modern fiction series from WGC Productions. I featured this show back when the first season wrapped, and now that the second season has also wrapped, and because Jade graciously sent me the audio files early, I get to do it again, because it's fabulous. This is an up-close and raw look at addiction, coping, and surviving. And by raw, I mean that's how it leaves your nerves feeling sometimes. Other times, you're laughing out loud. Kind of like life, yeah? This is a powerful tale. And it heavily features queer, black characters and actors. Here's the trailer for season two. Hey! <laughs> it's Verisol. I know it's been a little while since I've talked to you, but I wanted to let you know it's not over. Oh no, things are happening and you're going to see them when they're done. And they're going to be done in like a week, like August 3rd, literally next week. But again, a lot of time has passed, which is why I'm going to give you a quick brush up because I can barely remember yesterday. So I don't expect you to remember anything that happened last season. All right, let's see if I can do this. Uh, give me some jaunty music, you know, something, something fun. Oh my goodness, that's fun to you? Interesting. All right, so last season. I was sitting in a park bench enjoying the day. My asshole ex and drug dealer Aaron invited me to a party. I didn't want to go. I was staying with my best friend Ollie because I was 21 days sober and I sort of disappeared so I wouldn't have to disappoint my girlfriend and lover of my life, <gasps> Nina. Ollie bailed on me so I went to Aaron's party. I got some coke, but I was B-R-O-K-E. So he told me to pay him back in a week on my birthday. I took the coke. Nina found me. We talked. She was mad. The cops came. I jumped out a window. Made it back to her place where she told me she did not want to have sex with me. Ollie shows up and lets her know I'm sober. She was mad. I tell her I almost choked to death at a club, which is why I'm sober now. She stops being mad and she kind of gets it. Ah, happy days. I am trying to get a job. I fail. I tried to give the coat back to Aaron. He's an asshole. Also, my twin brother's been dead for five years and being sober brings me back to how not good I feel about that. I try to ask Nina for money, but her dad gets cancer, so I don't. Ah, also we get engaged, which might make that the happiest day of my life and maybe the weirdest day of hers. Anyway, I decide to sell the drugs for money. Turns out the buyer is a child. I don't sell drugs to the child. Don't. I turn 23. I tell Aaron I don't have the money. He stabs me. I go into a coma. I see a creature made of eyeballs. They tell me to go home. I beat the shit out of him. Turns out they're fine. And they, they also like me, which is weird because no one should like me. Anyway, I wake up. Doctors give me some shit, ton of oxy. I start being a private chef. Ollie goes to South Africa to study abroad. Me and Nina set a wedding day, but we have to keep moving it up because her dad is dying. Then I have this nightmare and I wake up and I, I get some water and then I start to freak out and then I start talking about how many wait, 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 wait. What? That's season two. Oh no, shit, sorry. Oh my, I got into a flow. Honestly, I think I blacked out a little. No, it's, it's okay. Just, you know, they're going to hear about the next week. So you want to save a little bit for then, you know, get a little mysterious in there, you know, a little yeah. mystery. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. I mean, I'm an enigma, you see, which is why I have a show where I tell my deepest, most intimate, personal moments to literally anybody who will listen to me. <laughs> but hey, that's showbiz, baby. Pew, 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 pew. Okay. See you next week. August 3rd. August 3rd, baby. We're back. Small Victories has reached the season two finale with more seasons coming. You'll need about five hours to listen to the current 20 episodes. Next week. The latest issue of The End has seven entries in the new season's coming soon section, and three of them start releasing episodes in just a few days. Season two of The Creepy Quadrant, a dramatized narrated horror anthology from Jana Roach, starts on the 6th of October. You'll need just over an hour to listen to all of the episodes in season one. Season three of Escaping Denver, a dramatized sci-fi thriller from Curious Casts, starts up again on the 9th of October. Give yourself about 12, nope, make that 13 hours to listen to all the episodes across the first two seasons. Season two of The Road of Shadows, a dramatized sci-fi tale from Mark R. Healy, starts up again on the 10th of October. You'll need about five hours to listen to all the episodes in season one. Trailers or snippets for those three and the four shows from the last week segment are coming your way right after I say... 
And that's all for this episode of The End, last week, this week, and the next week. For these and the other audio fiction shows featured, highlighted, and coming soon that were included in the 57th issue of The End, including links to listen to the shows mentioned in this episode, please visit theend.fyi. I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for listening. And here are your trailers or snippets. Bad Influencer. Sarah Sawyer's dream is to be a famous influencer. But in reality, she's far from it. How's my post with Adam and Eva doing? Oh, two comments. Both from your parents. Until she made a wish. And I'm finally a famous influencer. The only problem is, I'm not sure how I got here. Because having millions of followers comes with millions of problems. I'm getting canceled because I'm the face of a problematic designer and I can't get out of it. Come here. I'm a hugger. Sarah, Adam, so you are having an affair. Can you confirm? The news is everywhere. This is fantastic. Featuring Dumois. Now, Sarah, this photo of you and your best friend, Eva Evolving's boyfriend and business partner, Adam, is everywhere. Can you tell me what is going on here? Perez Hilton. I don't know if I legally should be here. Kristen Doty. He's not worth it. And Christy Carlson Romano. Whatever you do, just stay away from psychics. And that includes the ones on TikTok. Will Sarah survive the nonstop scandals that come with being in the social media spotlight? Follow Bad Influencer on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. Will you accept a phone call from the Metropolitan Correctional Center from... It's Eva, darling. (gasps) No fucking way. Bad Influencer, a dramatized, immersive rom-com from Gabby Conti and Emerald Audio with Gemini 13, has posted the final episode of the complete series. Everyone's happy. So much I needed to share with you. I hope I get time. Everything isn't as perfect as it seems in this world, Parker, and it just about breaks my heart to be the one to have to tell you. What is that crazy man doing? Even from here, I can tell the man is terrified. But terror isn't something you see very often in the dome. Okay, when you're ready, could you state your name and designation for the recording? In here, the system is always listening. It listens to us via our comms and it watches too. We have to be happy. Do you think you could understand the complexity of a medication so sophisticated it has changed our society beyond all recognition? We're never going to agree on this. This problem won't go away just because you avoid it. I just want to be happy. Like everyone else. What's wrong with that? You want to be brainwashed like everyone else. Stop it. That's what you think, but I I don't see it that way. Everyone's Happy, a new audio fiction podcast. Coming to your favorite platform soon. I will know if you lie. I will know. Everyone's Happy, a dramatized sci-fi series from Gravy Tray Media, has posted the finale of the first season. Moonbase Theta out. This is Consortium Channel 5, Moonbase Reports and Broadcasts. The combined corporate Moonbase project, a sign of our ongoing success. Broadcasting, this is Roger Bergato Fisher, Communications, Moonbase Theta. The date is August 4th, 2098. The time is 1015. We are now at 20 weeks before base shutdown. According to guidelines, the majority of our crew has gone into stasis to conserve resources. Still awake from our 42-person complement are myself, Nessa Chong, Agriculture, Shwini Ray, Astrophysics, Michelle Langlois, Security, and Wilder, Base Maintenance. This is as per your list, other than the replacement with Nessa. Our other farmer, Harold McVett, was a medical induction due to respiratory distress. A full report will be transmitted after this broadcast. 
Tasks for the shutdown sequence are outlined in the memo approved by senior management. These will be assigned as they best suit each team member and include the ramping down of all mining operations, programming the radio telescopes for remote operation, closing down all active experiments, and saving off data. Experiments requiring special attention include Bristol, where the hedgehogs will need to transition to Earth's standard atmosphere, Pixie, where the hallucinogenic agents must be neutralized without aspiration, and decisions must be made regarding the mutated tardigrades from Project Grobear. All team members will assist in the sterilizing and space-proofing of laboratory areas as they are closed off. All active crew will also take shifts monitoring the stasis pods, as we have already noted some variations in the reports. We'd like to request the full shutdown logs from bases Alpha through Eta to see if they experienced any of the same. None of us are experts in this area. The additional data would be helpful. Naturally, we're all looking forward to waking up safe and sound back on Earth. We appreciate you making this a priority. We would have accessed the information directly, but our link to the bases on the near side remains broken. Moonbase Theta Out, a narrated sci-fi series from Monkey Man Productions and Fable and Folly, has posted the final episode of the complete series. More no. The human body, demurring to death, is never pretty. Rigor mortis had long ago set in and receded. The buxom bane of my existence hitched up her slacks, crouched next to the putrefying body, and whispered in my ear. And startling finds of science, allied with beautiful tools to spawn a plethora of pleasures, as I suck the very pith of such sweet reveries. Then you appear to make these splendors meager by compare. Woman, stop with the exclamations of lust over the stench of death. It's unseemly. I stood and stretched out the kinks, heading outside to light my stogie. Six months ago, Carla Danning sauntered into my life. All tits, temperament, and testicular torture. And she's been an infective spewing shackle around my tackle ever since. Also, I have reason to believe that is not the name she was given at birth. A few months before we found the girl, Carla started following me around night and day, and I had no idea why. Suddenly, she was there. Wherever I happened to be, Buzzing around overhead like a bloated fly at a Hey, picnic. you. Are we done here? I'm gonna get a cowbell for around your neck so you can't sneak up on me like that. <sighs> Morno, I'm gonna suggest that you go back to the unsmiling detective because your happy detective face has a real serial killer vibe. And I'm gonna suggest you let me do the questioning from now on. Why? I think I did a pretty good job. Carla pulled out her notepad, flipped it open, and proudly showed me her notes. I grabbed the notepad from her. Let's see. You jotted down the fact that her husband is probably a premature ejaculator. And what's this? Sally wears false eyelashes. Yeah. Establishes her tendency to be disingenuous. Next time, and every time thereafter, I do the talking. When you were so busy flirting with her, I thought I should jump in. What? Oh, give me a break. You've got a God-given set of pipes that make you sound like Sam Elliott with a -a two-pack-a-day habit doing a sexy pirate impression, and you blatantly exploit it at every opportunity. Really? 52? I wouldn't have thought you were a day over 40, Miss Sally. Please, do tell us more about how Stanley speckled the bedroom with his liquid love. The Dex Morneau series by Jenny Decker. Narrated by Greg Kreitz and Jenny Decker. Music by Blue Dot Sessions. Morno, a dramatized crime story from Jenny Decker, has posted the final episode of the complete series. The Creepy Quadrant. technology works better than expected. The following recording was being stored in the files at World Technologies Marketing Headquarters and was submitted to us anonymously. 
We share it with you now, in the spirit of truth, and with the steadfast belief that everyone has a right to know. This is Kathy Condor with World Technologies Marketing, excited to engage with this new project. For the next week, I'll be shadowing the independent technology development group Peachtree Tech, which has requested our services. I'll be recording my observations and recommendations for how best to assist Peachtree Tech for the board of directors at World Technologies Marketing. Hey team, I'm currently sitting in the parking lot of Peachtree Tech Labs. And before going inside, I'll give you a quick rundown of what they've been working on and what they're looking for assistance with from us. Give you a little background here. Peachtree Tech has only been around for a few years, but in that time, they've already sold a few advancements in smartphone tech and home security systems to bigger companies. They have a new idea that they're really excited about and they're ready to show it off but they're hoping to bring it to the consumer directly instead of selling it to a middleman like they have in the past. That's where we come in. They have an amazing product, I think you'll agree in a moment, but they need assistance with the logistics of advertising and bringing that idea to market, generally speaking. The Creepy Quadrant, a dramatized narrated horror anthology from Jana Roach, soon starts its second season. Escaping Denver. I got more messages from Noah and Sarah, two strangers trapped in a maze beneath the Denver International Airport. They escaped the cells they woke up in, yet they're no closer to freedom. Instead, they're miles beneath the earth, barely surviving encounters with chupacabras and other monsters created in experimental biodomes. Hell, they even had a kill squad after them. What will they face next? <gasps> Did that tree just eat her? Who is behind all of this? What do they want? And how the hell did they end up in Denver? Is that... Don't say it. But it looks like... Don't. Say it. Holy shit. I'm just like you. A stranger. But through these messages, I'm their only connection to the outside and I won't let them down. We won't let them down. With your help, together we can figure this out. Please, help me help them. Escaping Denver, Season 2, landing March 28th. Listen for free now, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Escaping Denver, a dramatized sci-fi thriller from Curious Casts, soon starts its third season. The Road of Shadows. In the alley, the scent is stronger, overpowering. As I watch, the overhead lamps flicker and wink out one by one. God damn it. No. The girl appears briefly under the last streetlight, the headphones snug against her ears, the Walkman clasped to her hip. She's oblivious as she walks, lost in her own world. Hey, stop! I need to talk to you! Then she's swallowed up by the darkness again. Helen, wait a second! It strikes her in the gloom so fast she barely has time to scream. She falls into the edge of the lamplight and lies there, bleeding, motionless. The man's skin is scaly, flaking, and there are patches of soot on his cheeks. He stares at me with eyes like midnight. Eyes that are devoid of remorse, devoid of humanity. He's one of them. <sighs> I turn and run, and I don't look back. The Road of Shadows, a new mystery and suspense audio drama by Mark R. Healy, creator of The Strata. Listen now at theroadofshadows.com. The Road of Shadows, a dramatized sci-fi tale from Mark R. Healy, soon starts its second season. That's it for the additional trailers or snippets. Once again, I am Evo Terra for the end. Cheers!